Hello, everyone. So, Aaron, uh, yeah, uh, what are we talking about today? Lifestyle. No white booty. <laughs> Dude, why? <laughs> okay, un- unrelated. Yeah, that was no white. Singular. Who was that? Oh, yeah, okay. Some, some Disney booty. <sighs> PG right there. PG right there. So, yes, like you mentioned, we're talking about lifestyle. Uh, for some reason... Wait, we're, not, us, we're not keeping that, are we? I don't mind. Like, it, it helps. No, uh, you don't want booty and all in the first. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, too many rules. Too many rules. Yeah, man. What is this? Okay, so yeah, we're going to be talking about lifestyle and I don't know what else to introduce it as, so let's just jump into it. Yeah, that's the best way. Let's just jump into it. Would you like yeah. to start? Or? Yeah, like lifestyle is um, uh, a, a very broad term. Yep. Like it, it differs across countries, you know, across nations, mm-hmm. cultures. So, and even how geographically countries are located, even how much sun they receive. I mean, in, in very broad senses, I feel. Uh, yeah, so I was looking at how, you know, in context of India and the country that I'm in now, the UK, because it's the only other comparison that I can make from personal experience. So, uh, so I was looking at it in terms of like two different countries and how uh, an average day goes by for an adult here as, you know, as parents, as single individuals, as just looking at things like that. So, yeah, what, what, do, you, what do you think about that? Any, any ideas about an average Indian citizen's day-to-day routine or... Uh, okay, I, I can use uh, whatever experience I have. Uh, like, it's not suitable to me. Uh, I think that's because of my upbringing, might be, because of there's so much uh, uh, like sensory overload in Dubai, I guess. Um, and also, it so you were to do- brought up in Dubai and Certain parts of your childhood were in India, so yeah, you you, you can give context of both the countries. So how um, yeah. different it is? Um, I haven't thought about it like this, so I think I will take some time to process it. Um, mm-hmm. what was my life like? Yeah. So anyway, what I found was in India. Uh, work, I mean, work and occupation of a person takes a very uh, important, it's very important to see what a person does for a living. Mm-hmm. Like there is some certain respect, some pride associated with the kind of occupation. So even if you look at uh, people like our elders and the generations before, I, I like to believe that there are some changes happening, but generations before like they would be uh, the first few questions that you ask a new person would be like oh what do you do for a living and and they say oh yeah (laughs) i know right so you ask that and uh it's funny i had a conversation with my mother about this same thing like how uh, the job identity of a job of a person is uh, like overly weighed upon their occupational identity so if you are a doctor already people are like they have so much respect for you at the same time uh, if you're not, not doing something that's like that's an everyday job that is very much essential you know uh, with the covid pandemic and all that essential work uh, narrative was going on so that's when people started realizing that we can't our society can't function without all these uh, non-respectable jobs that uh, that are in the mindsets of a lot of indians uh, I don't know how it came about, but uh, over here, one 
difference that I could find was that people don't look at what you know there is a uh, what do you what do you call it a dignity and uh, dignity of labor yeah so they understand that everybody is important for the society they don't they don't associate much respect with the occupation maybe it's, it has got to do with our caste system and you know how already there was a system that looked at labor and what okay. occupation one did for the society and so i have a that. whole i have a whole other take on it and okay. uh what do you think what what do you think like about the idea that indians are deeply insecure and that's the reason why we look at occupation as an identity because like you know our self our our self is insufficient so we look to our work to prove our worth and to give us to to substantiate ourselves but i think that makes a lot of sense and i think yeah um yeah insecure i i mean i, I don't know generally i am i also hold this opinion that we generally i mean of course there are exceptions but uh, indians tend to be more they tend to listen they tend mm-hmm. to listen to what what is being told good mm-hmm. at taking you know uh, good at taking orders <laughs> but <laughs> embarrassing uh, i suppose uh i don't i i feel like there is some i don't know how to even try to explain it what i think it, is it some form of inferiority complex that we have mm-hmm. that uh, towards uh, you know fairer races uh, i have felt that so many times that how uh, recently i came across like these vloggers going through streets of delhi mm-hmm. and uh, they just meet random people and random indians are, like on the street they are vendors street vendors basically they ask these people to like come there i mean come visit their home they serve them food i mean we can see that they are like really poor big families of uh, like five six members Uh, in small houses but they're very generous to the guest like and all the comments were like you know no atidi devo bhava guest is our god mm-hmm. that that philosophy and all were flowing in the comments but i was thinking whether if the same treatment would be given to a person of a darker skin complexion like would an african american if he went to india would he receive the same same level of respect i mean these are this was a question that i thought but <clears throat> so i always believe that there is a preference for fairer complex complexion in indian mindset uh, so and the caste system and coming back to lifestyle and occupation uh, yeah i mean that should be one trajectory that we should eventually be taking indian society that we need to move away from giving importance to people's occupation you know beyond a point i mean for a better future like <laughs> but it's not really easy is it i guess like the question is what's the alternative um yeah what what alternative uh, i mean sometimes i feel like uh, why, why do we do jobs why do we have all these career i mean why i mean in the end it's to earn money so here people just look at it like that you know how how does he earn money like he does something for the society you know he earns his money it's a honest job <laughs> I, I but, think that money has just uh, made it uh, like uh, made careers and work lose its purpose. Uh, so if you look at the grander scheme of things, and if you, I don't know if comparing ourselves to ants might help. Uh, 
like basically we're advancing society like i think that's how i like to look at work uh it's it's to find new things it's uh that's exploration and that's one part of work and yeah just advancement i believe that's how i look at work mm. yeah so, so again in the indian context uh, it's generally observed that people are working overtime like so many so many long hours i have so many friends who tell me like they were in it field especially that they being put to work overtime <clears throat> and and we are not they're not being paid extra mm-hmm. and people do put up with it because if uh, they don't they don't do it they can fire them the companies might fire them and there is a, like 100 others waiting in line with the same qualification same so we have a huge labor market and a poorly made labor law laws that doesn't benefit the individual so because the government is not really strict with the laws like companies can cut costs mm-hmm. that's why all these uh, companies are coming there right anyway and uh, we, i mean we are in a sticky situation our population unless the government takes a stand there is no work life balance people are working a major portion of the day it is just to earn money just to earn money where when are they spending it so that was all things that i was looking at when we discussed about lifestyle when we, when we decided we we'll talk about lifestyle okay <clears throat> what do you uh, have a propose can you can you think of a framework on how to solve that like how does the government use its resources to ensure that people are not working just to survive and that they have more time for leisure for their families i mean <clears throat> keep working our limits i mean so it's if set a maximum number of hours a person can be put to work at at a certain amount of pay mm-hmm. and if the if the company wants to exceed that they, they should be paying overtime um or otherwise i mean by doing that itself they can potentially increase the number of employees the companies these giants will be forced to employ more people maybe double let's assume like uh they can be put to work only half the time that they are doing now so that means double the number of employees so that also might drive up employment <coughs> in sectors give more jobs to the people uh yeah i mean labor laws man unless the government <clears throat> stands up for the people it's going to be these corporates that are going to which which is currently happening anyway yeah what do you think <laughs> did i go off on a rant i suppose um uh, <laughs> sorry but <buddy>. oh <laughs> yo yo i suppose we are having we are in oh, I, was, i was also concert. thinking uh <clears throat> sorry what nothing i thought that the volume of the music was going quite high yeah there is some music coming in but i think it's fine okay if you talk it's it's not it's not that loud that music okay. isn't yeah do do you know about like working hours in there over there in dubai how how is it 48 hours a week a week maximum yeah. yeah so if you put to work beyond that the the company is paid yeah uh if you are working overtime on a week day you are supposed to get 25% over your basic uh per hour and if you are working overtime on a not not overtime if you are working on a yeah if it's a weekend uh it's 50% over your basic okay so, so that's like if you're getting yeah if you're getting 100 a day 
if you're working overtime, you'll be getting 125. I mean, 100 an hour. Yeah, 100 Let's an say hour. 100 an hour. So you'll be yeah. getting 125 an hour. I mean, for each hour, overtime hour that you're putting in. Yeah, I feel like this is something that our people back home in India should be aiming for. Like, But uh, people seem to be helpless, like where to protest, whom to protest towards. I mean, unless there's a like, huge movement. I, I think there are two, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I think, I yeah, think go there ahead. are two, two other points which have to be addressed alongside that. Uh, mm-hmm. Because we, we do have this, this law in the way that states like how to calculate overtime and stuff, but uh, it's not always implemented. Uh, so I ha- I don't think I have the most experience to comment on it, but I think I would say that one, like people need, like the founders of businesses need to uh, start their business with the right values. Like uh, when you get started, don't think about exploitation and have sufficient funding. Like don't start a company with like insufficient resources and then complain, like saying, I don't have enough money to pay you. I'm not going to pay over time. So I think like that's some like proper planning is required. Um, I think my second point was about just having the right values, which I already mentioned in my first point. So I think these two things are like have, have to improve side by side. For overtime, but it's very uh, ideal, no? Like to have the right value is very, uh, very subjective. Like what what values would? It's sim- as I mean. simple as not taking advantage of someone. Like uh, I don't think people think about it like this, but like you you are selling your time. So the buyer of the time has to pay up, I guess. That's a good, that's a good thing. I like how you put it. You're selling your time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, I was also thinking, looking at how the daily routine goes. As far as I can see and observe from uh, uh, my point here, my point of view here, uh, people tend to be doing a lot of outdoor activities even in winters when it's like really cold and five degrees six degrees i mean one zero uh, i can see people taking a walk taking their dogs to walk i mean even the dogs will be wearing some clothing on them i mean it's so cold and people still venture out and do these activities and they have time to do it in their day that that's my point so unless I mean, unless people can find time for themselves in a day, uh, continued, uh, like a lifestyle that's like every day you're working overtime, you don't have even weekends. I know one of my friends uh, who I always uh, you know, have a row with about how long he works, how, how much overtime he works. Uh, even on Sunday, sometimes uh, that, that he'll be occupied like with work. So I, I always tell how uh, I always have a fight with him yeah but basically what I think is I mean continued practice of this will be will make you tired in life so as uh, we should think about how this will affect us as an entire uh, society like huge I mean a large sector of large portion of Indian youth is employed in IT and uh, that field so I, I I think unless we like really address this as soon, um, our mm. overall capacity as a society will be less. Like we're just living, with like from, I from signing in, signing out. <laughs> like like I think this is me putting it out into the universe, and it's also kind of me uh, communicating my areas of interest. But I hope like attention starts shifting to governance more. Like, I hope more people pay more attention to that. Like, it, should I describe it? Like, governance? Yeah. Basically, how you govern things. <laughs> o- oversight. <laughs> like, pay more attention to policy making. Like, pay more attention to the framework that you're operating in. Like, 
that makes things so easy like once once you know the path like then you just literally follow it so i guess it would be nice to have more people doing that uh like like looking paying more attention to government what they're doing in real government and governance also like a uh, governance can can come into play for companies as well so yeah corporate governance yeah uh to your point about outdoor activities uh i have reasons on why it might not i don't know if, if it's popular uh but i think some deterrence towards people spending more time outward outside is like the hygiene of our cities uh yeah, not, definitely not, not particular like i think anyone would enjoy walking around a place like this if if it fucking looks like this like you enjoy walking around uh, uh but if it's You're really like, annoyed with the light aren't you <laughs> no 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 <laughs> Okay I don't know if that part of the video made it into the final cut but I I was complaining to Mahat yesterday about those blinks not yesterday earlier in the video about the trees lights it's okay now but at a certain point it just looked like <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah uh, the hygiene thing and also the uh, just how jam packed our city is cities are like i i think if we go out we would appreciate having our own space uh which might be difficult in indian cities and yeah, yeah right. i i think like the beautification and like this making uh uh like india more i mean naturally india is beautiful but like wherever our people are uh aesthetic yeah if some more attention can be be given to aesthetic that would be amazing like we need the uh, more infrastructure for like recreation and leisure mm-hmm. so we need more parks more playgrounds more green car and cities but like you said our density population density is really high in all the major cities and uh, as far as i can see even back in chennai uh, like people landfill landfilling all you know swamps and for construction that that led that led to severe flooding and so basically our city planning is in shambles i feel uh, not not enough priorities given to what what the residents need beyond just a bed and a room and a kitchen and you know and and a place to park their car they have one not much thought is given to that mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's just flats and apartments and office roads and yeah that's about it and and the sea front if you have it if you're lucky to have it it probably sorry i had to on a little bit uh <laughs> did, did i bore you to sleep <laughs> no i think it's just late uh yeah i think that just shows how it might show how the attitude of whoever planned the cities were it might have been more short term like a uh, uh, tunnel vision sort of object oriented objective oriented um, narrow object objective oriented planning uh, and maybe what we need is something more holistic like looking at all aspects of humanity and designing a city based on that yeah so can be air vendor coming to that like how we need more a holistic approach uh, i think we have discussed this once like before about sustainable transport policies and all like so how we uh, like the, from the course that i'm studying now um, we are learning about how how to build cities and transport networks so the new concepts are around how walking should be walking or active travel like walking cycling uh, that should be the highest priority in a city so cities should be more accessible to people of all you know all ki- all kinds of people like people with disabilities they should be able to access all 
parts of cities <laughs> yeah so uh, active travel is the top priority and then so in that comes walking as a top and then cycling and then public transport and then after that comes cars so what happened is we have come to depend on cars so much that our cities have changed Mm -hmm. like our services are far apart so we that if the restaurant is a little outside the city also you don't care because you can access it using a car but ideally the restaurants and all the centers of activity commerce should be together and around you know equally distributed across the city so that you can take a walk through the city and uh, access it so i feel like that that's that that's a huge factor in how content one one's life is in a city mm-hmm. like if you are just driving to a uh, coming back home and coming back home after your overtime <laughs> and you're too tired to do anything you just sleep that happens to you most of the year you're going to end up with fatigue you end up having that lack of motivation which might be having already might be having other effects on our policy and how reactive or not reactive our societies to problems in our governance government all that general so i think it's all very connected so basically yeah so i was reading an article mm-hmm. um so mm-hmm. uh the title of the article was we have known for over a century that our environment shapes our health why are we still blaming our unhealthy lifestyle okay why who's oh by who uh, who's the I didn't check who was the author, but it was on a website called theconversation.com. Okay. I will link it in the description. Uh, I guess this is just a part of the podcast where I just pretty much list some facts that I found out. Mm-hmm. I hope I hope that people find this interesting. So, this was a, from a report called the Black Report, which was published forty years ago, uh, but unfortunately, it remains true today. A, a a baby boy who's born in Kensington, London, can expect to live over ten years longer and nearly twenty years more if he's in good health. than a baby boy born in a relatively deprived Kensington Liverpool so can you can you redo that reading but we'll cut this bit can you you, you sound boring dude okay <laughs> you sound like you sound very plain and uh, like uh, we'll cut this we'll cut this list we'll just bit make it like read it like you want me to listen come on let's go <laughs> i give up <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no. no, no. no this just, 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 is, just put, okay, put just your hands up. Put what happened? What up. happened to you? Why you low on energy today? <laughs> because, <laughs> because I don't have a weekend. I guess that's one reason. <laughs> Are you also like not having a good work-life balance, Aaron? Oh uh, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Oh, fuck me. Exhibit Anyways. A, people. Here, here is a prime <laughs> example of a youth who's tired of. Are you working out? <laughs> no, I'm not. Like, see, I, I, I hope you're I, getting paid. If you I, are. <laughs> I couldn't make it any more interesting because, like, it's literally a fact. I don't. I can't read it like it's freaking <laughs> Game of Thrones or something. <laughs> and we are not cutting this like it's going to be there if it's going to annoy the audience well unfortunately like once you record three episodes and when you're on your fourth one and when 
the day of the recording has changed and like everything is like kind of top oh, yeah i mean so much shit so much shit is happening yeah so i i believe how many how I, many location changes were there like already you changed location thrice i guess so but still yep no all of this is going to go in the episode if this episode is being uploaded all of the shit is going to be uploaded <laughs> i know how how are you going to cut it dude <laughs> it'll be like suddenly we are like stopping somewhere and then <laughs> okay i don't know we can check that um okay so basically to summarize the fact of a kid who's born in kensington london can expect to live 20, 10 to 20 years longer uh, than a baby boy who's born in kensington liverpool uh this was kensington, from kensington liverpool Yeah so there are two Kensingtons okay yes <laughs> i mean london and liverpool that, that's like within the same country itself yeah i think this whole uh, the the article on the website focused on uk um okay. then another fact uh, i ideally would have been able to link this nicely using stories and context but i'm not there right now so i'm just going to list these as facts um so uh, people are being employed but uh, the number of jobs are part time low paid temporary doesn't help in the whole lifestyle improvement um then there are campaigns that uh, try to encourage people to move more eat healthier limit alcohol consumption but uh, it completely disregards economic factors uh neglects neglects the fact that people don't have access to the same resources opportunity to be as healthy as others are you I getting an economic fact are you getting an idea i get that <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to figure out what the economic fact is like limiting consumption of alcohol that's a good uh, thing if you i, if you I went i exactly. think i went too fast so so it's basically like there are campaigns which try to uh, have people uh, move more eat healthier and limit alcohol consumption but these campaigns do not consider the underlying economic factors like like you know yeah. how much yeah but economic factor of factors like who it's going to benefit or whether it's going to generate loss no 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 economic fa- i believe what it's it, it intends is <clears throat> whether the family has uh whether it like whether it's viable oh. for them okay it's, okay yeah mm-hmm. i mean of course poverty is mm, a exactly. problem yeah you can address that <clears throat> it's kind of funny like i think it's more prevalent uh, like uh people talk without saying how to do it and that's just weird like you have to provide the solution to so yeah i remember that elon musk t- tweet what yeah. happened to that you didn't you didn't come across that when un was like uh, some amount of money could right yeah save world hunger i mean yeah and then he, he tweeted tell me how you going to do it and i'll give it to you yeah yeah, yeah. so i don't know what happened to that later on what But happened with that uh, i don't think it's this is going to be solved with just some money i mean just like that one of it's not something that you can pay off you have to change system systemic you, problem you need resources but you also need direction and leadership yeah and right and you need to invest it in right places yeah so nah, of course it's not a simple problem so yeah i mean that's about it uh so some conclusions from that article was like uh the real- reality is that people's health choices are heavily influenced by the conditions they live in uh i i feel bad that i'm just reading out and like i don't want people to think that uh this is just a show where we read read things <laughs> um i mean if but- they stuck on Till till this mark, I'm pretty sure. Like, 
they're not they're not thinking that but if you're listening yeah we are not <laughs> uh we appreciate you guys supporting us i'm pretty sure we yeah a core you teach a few guys right here we we're just having a bit of a downer <laughs> and then we are we are like pushing keeping ourselves motivated yes yeah. please focus on that fact we are, we are being consistent yeah i don't i don't know what else to talk about okay so uh, prior to this yeah, let's wrap it then no wait <laughs> 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 prior to this whole research thing that i tried to do uh i was just like trying to think myself what lifestyle is all about um and so for me i just focus a lot on work so i guess your lifestyle revo- revolves around um uh, what your goals are uh and also i think it's it's at the same time like someone like myself needs like hard boundaries in place uh like you know getting enough sleep uh that part i think i'm more or less focusing on something that i've spent less time on is like my physical fitness um okay. which i think i am uh, giving a little more attention right now uh yeah uh I think for a few months I I literally had no additional mobility other than just walking and like you know going to work and walking to the metro station and going back home and th- those sort of moments and then I got started with a training uh at a at a gym and I suppose that whole thing just showed like I think my mobility overall became quite rigid because like I was doing the same movements frequently yeah i mean uh it happens right yeah uh, so i think that's something that we need to incorporate in lifestyle uh and Dude, i, I mean that, i mean yeah. that's yeah, sorry to interrupt like but that's that's what hap- that's what i was saying you know, like we need more parks we need more i mean there was this whole other point that i wanted to make about why parks are needed for better parenting also like mm-hmm. uh really so here basically we have huge parks here and we okay. have also we have like cycle tracks on roads mm-hmm. and so i can see i i see a lot of parents like mom and kids dad and kids like going with this uh, on their cycle you know and on on separate cycles i mean or the kid will be on a small cycle and they'll be learning how to cycle and it's a safe environment but i understand like the economic differences are huge between the countries that we are comparing but uh, that is something that we should be you know aware of and we should plan for and we should aim for socially like we should understand that when governments back home say like we have built a bridge uh, that and should say that that's development we should we should we should be able to see that that's not like really you know <laughs> that's not development in real all that is doing is is put make some more space for cars so it's not going to change anything much we need things that have more ripple effects in the society so uh, i can see better bonding happening between parents and kids here and more different kinds of family time you know there is more potential for exploring more fun stuff and not just uh, i mean it it's going it, it it would be better for generations to come also if we can do that as soon as possible yep yeah i mean that's that was what i had in mind about active travel <laughs> you know back to your point about being mobile Uh, yes yeah, so i was going to add to those saying uh, uh like we need to be spending more time on like relationships and all of that um so yeah i i am doing that and deepening having intimate relationships important like it's important to uh 
to be a wholesome human. Wholesome. Yeah. Wholesome. What else is important in your lifestyle? Physical activity. Be a breathtaking activity. human. To be a breathtaking. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yep. Let's wrap it. I'm following what Mahat said, and this is how we wrap it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you guys. Uh, thank wrap. you for listening, and hope you like and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And and I hope that this specific episode makes you want to donate to us. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, we have a future podcast. Aaron Alexander and Mahat Mangal. Yeah, Mahat Mangal and Aaron Alexander. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>